What's up everybody and welcome back to another video. My name is Jen and today we're diving into Gitex FDM mini printer. A compact, very compact, little printer that we've been testing for the past seven days. In today's video we're going to go over the full unboxing, what our experience was, our first impressions, pros and cons, and who this machine is probably best for. I want to go ahead and disclose that I am not sponsored by Gitech. They are not paying me for this video. These are my honest opinions, my honest review. They did, however, send this unit to me for free to review. So we want to thank you, Gitech, for this opportunity. I do want to, however, explain that we only have just begun 3D printing since November of 2024. However, we have made hundreds and hundreds of models uh, since then as we sell them live each week over on Facebook. Now, I am only in the bamboo realm so this was a little bit out of my comfort zone so we're gonna go ahead and discuss those things and uh, without further ado let's just jump right into this video all right here we are unboxing the Gitek FDM mini printer it came nice and snug there were no loose pieces look how cute he is it only has a very minimal unpacking there are a few of these foam pieces that come off the front and they come off the back I think there's one more foam piece that is stuck up inside of the printer Pull that out very gently and that's it for the foam. Then you're just going to unsnap some of these zip ties. You've got, I believe, three total and then plug in your SD card, plug in your tubing, roll on the spoolie and then go ahead and turn on your printer. It was very simple and an easy setup. Not hard at all for any beginner or somebody who's never set up a printer. I was able to do it without any issues whatsoever. We turned on the machine and immediately began to do the auto leveling. And immediately started to test their benchies. Now, the first benchie that we tested was with a purple silk and it did not come out, it failed. So our first thought was maybe we should just stick to a basic filament. So we switched to a basic purple filament. And side note, if you are seeing this right here, this machine does only hold a half kg spoolie. It will not hold the one kg. So in my case, I had to put my one kg spoolie into a dryer in order for the filament to roll on. So keep that in mind with this printer. The second benchy we did with the basic purple, like I said, I was happy to see that everything looked pretty good. The tower stack finished. It, it came out pretty nice. Unfortunately, right after the Benchy, we thought we were off to the races and started printing other models and we tried to do some fish and they just wouldn't work. So we went back to the basics and decided to do another Benchy, which in this case was the standing kitty cat. Now during this phase, we were getting really freaked out because as you can see, it is a very tiny printer. So we thought that maybe the cat was too big. We thought it was gonna get smashed or it was gonna get stuck, we didn't know. As you can see, the top looks a little bit rough and we thought that it was pushing down into the model, but it turns out we were wrong. I think this is just to hold a pencil. That's, that's what I'm guessing. We decided let's just go ahead and try out some TPU. So we went ahead and started with the TPU. And as you can see, there was a little bit of drooping up under his chin there. So we didn't have really any luck with the TPU. As you can see, we were making lots of different models and just having some problems here and there with adhesion there was really a lot of different technical issues that we were having, whether it was adhesion or some random things that we'll talk about on the cons list. It has a very bright light that we lit up in the room when all the lights were off and it was very nice, much brighter than anything on my bamboo print. It is very quiet and it is a very small fingerprint. It feels pretty durable in the sense that I wouldn't be scared to travel with it if that is something that you would want to do. So after many models, we weren't successful with anything really except for a couple of SDL files like a frog a unicorn frog and the astronaut benchy but after many models of articulating pieces we finally got one to be successful and that would have been our trilobite now the only thing is out of six tries, the only way that this trilobite articulating model would work is on 50% speed. So all in all, it was definitely a little bit on the trying side. Here is the trilobite. That was our very first successful articulating model. Now, when we started making the dinosaurs, we make these on the A1 Mini all the time. So we started by doing what we normally do, and that's no brim. The no brim didn't work at all. So we decided, okay, let's do partial brim. 
the partial brim didn't work at all. So then we decided to do a full brim. Where is he at? He's somewhere lost in here. There he is. We did a full brim and it did not work. We decided to try a full brim on 50% and that's when we struck gold. We have so many failed trilobites. We couldn't get it to work. So we tried it on 50% and yes, it did come out and it worked. But here is the Benchy for the astronaut. This one came out rather nicely actually. Um, here's the kitty cat. Here is a phone holder that we downloaded off of Colts. I'd say this one, you know, is pretty decent for what it is. So for these two models, I did two different things. This one is 0 0.20 on your um, layer height. And as you can see, it, it's not great. I wouldn't sell that in my shop, to be honest. So we did the 0.16 and it did much better, but again, not fantastic. So it would probably have to be done on 50%, which would take um, an incredible amount of time. So here is kind of uh, what we were left with for the week. Here is the TPU bunny that we did. We are not savvy in the TPU realm. We have never printed anything with it. So we went and we picked out one that said TPU Bunny specifically for this filament to make sure that it would work out. I could try another model, um, maybe put it on 50%, see what happens. But yeah, that's kind of what we got for the tester on the TPU. So with that being said, let's go ahead and talk about some of the pros with this printer. One right off the bat is its compact size. It is cute, it's lightweight, much lighter than any of the bamboo printers. I would think that this is easily movable if you are maybe in an RV motorhome type niche where you need to print something that would help you in your everyday hobbying needs. So if you needed to print a small part for something this would be a great fit for you. It has a bright light, it's portable like I said, and it's very quiet. However, that's about all that has to be said for the pros. Let's go ahead and talk about the cons of this machine. Now first I wanna reiterate, this is just my experience as someone who is also kind of new in this realm. I am not a senior 3D printist. I have not worked with the old Ender 3s and things of the past that needed a lot of tinkering, manual bed level leveling, you know, a lot of maintenance from the old realm of 3D printing before bamboo came along. So keep that in mind. I am a little bit pampered in that aspect. I'm a little bit spoiled, I guess you would say. So if you are a senior printer and you have some thoughts of your own you'd like to share, feel free to leave them in the comments below. So with that being said, let's go ahead and talk about some of the cons that were for me. Number one, the fail rate was too high. Now, I don't want to say that it's because I'm a beginner because I pump about so many models each week. You guys have seen my vlogs. I don't have fail after fail after fail, otherwise I would quit this hobby. So for us, because the fail rate is a little bit higher, it requires a little bit maybe more tinkering and specific settings needed for specific types of SDL files. I would say that this is not a good fit for what I need a 3D printer for, which is selling weekly. I am printing 24 seven in here and I need something that is reliable, fast, doesn't need a lot of babysitting. That would be the second issue I had with this. There were times when if it did get stuck, it would just call the print complete. It wouldn't even let you con finish the print. It would just say it was done and it was halfway through a model and because something happened, it just didn't finish. That's a huge issue for me. I It happened to us a few times. So that's kind of a big deal breaker for me. I had a lot of struggles with that. It doesn't, it does say that it has some sort of anti-tangle detection, but it doesn't do anything if you're not around when it happens. So that was a huge letdown. Another con for us is the limited information on the screen. Now there was a very peculiar feature about it where it showed the timer going up I'm not sure what Geetech was thinking when they did this. I feel like us would like to have a timer that tells you how much time is left versus how much time it's taken thus far. There was no way to know how long was left to know when it was gonna be done. It didn't tell you anything about how much filament was being used. It told you more about where the Z axis was and that's just kind of the information that's not needed for me for what I need this printer to be used for. Another con for me is there's no internet and I am very much in the bamboo realm where I don't need an SD card. I don't need to use Orca. I was forced to use the Orca slicer with an SD card with this machine. And while it was great experience to learn about it and I realized, yeah, Orca is a fantastic software program. I just didn't like the extra step. Would rather just not have to have it. 
Now the size of the printer itself, while it is very cute and would be great for maybe a child in this realm working on it for maybe school, I found it's not going to work for me because I need, I actually want something bigger than what my P1S has. I need a, uh, a bigger plate. So with that being said, this was not a good fit for my needs. So who would this work for and who should buy this? To be honest, I think the price point, which would also be another con, is too high. For its price point at I believe 200 and some change, it is very close to the competitive A1 Mini, which is only about $40 more. And unless you are traveling with this in something that needs to be portable and low wattage, I would probably have to pass unless the price was drastically reduced or the problems were fixed. Now, it is a wonderful portable size. It is very lightweight. I would not be scared to go and print this on the road. If you're somebody looking for something to do that with content, if you have a kid who might be too rough with something with an A1 Mini and would wanna be moving it around, perhaps you are just a hobbyist that needs it for one thing and you don't need all of the fancy things that the A1 Mini can provide, then maybe this could be something for you. Also, if you are somebody who needs something that doesn't require a lot of power, like you are in an RV, this would be perfect for that consumer. However, I don't think that that consumer market would help Geetech, so I think Geetech has to make some changes to really hit the market, especially with the printers like Bamboo running under 200 bucks during seasons like Black Friday. It's gonna be hard to push this product for people who know what they can get for that money. So let me know what you guys think. Have you used a Geetech printer before? Have you seen it? Have you bought it? Have you used it? Let me know in the comments. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. It really does help our channel grow and get seen by new people. We're here every week showing you guys what we're up to in the 3D printing realm. Feel free to hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next vlogging video. Thank you so much for watching watching. See you next time. Bye for now. 3D prints where we vlog thing and review on Geetex 3D mini printer FDM. Blah, 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 blah. Welcome back to Geet. Welcome back to Geetex. Meh. <laughs> uh, the, oh my god. So my name is Jin and today we are diving into Geetex first printer. I don't know if it's its first printer.